Mapping Subnets to VLANs. By the time we're done here, we will align our global subnet strategy to our site VLANs. And if you haven't watched the nugget on the global subnet strategy that we created for VIA and all of our other clients, I would highly suggest you do that before you get here. Otherwise, there's some things that just won't make sense. And fair warning, moderate subnetting skills are suggested before you dive in here. That's because there's no way to talk about a global subnetting strategy without really knowing subnetting. In one of the previous nuggets, I walk through the method that you should be able to use from an enterprise perspective to set up an IP addressing plan that scales. Now, please know that I'm trying to summarize what's probably volumes of information on enterprise IP addressing into just a couple videos because understanding VLANs without understanding at least the mindset to have for enterprise IP addressing is not helpful. So step one in doing that is to pick a class of address. And I suggested you always go with the class A RFC 1918 private address 10.0.0.0 forward slash eight, because it gives you the biggest, most flexible addresses to use. You then can determine the size of subnets for the site, which we did in another nugget. We looked at VIA and all of our other customers and said, what's a subnetting scheme that might scale? Just the size, not the addresses. Then we determined the master subnet for each location. So I said, well, let's create our overlord subnet first of all, because we service three different kinds of customers here at VIA. So somewhere around a million addresses is allocated to each genre of customer. From there, we create the master subnet that I start to cross out that we would use on a per site basis. And a slash 21 gives you that increment of eight. So you can see right here, as we looked at our academic customers, we've got 10.16.0 zero through seven, eight through 15. There's that increment of eight. If we kept going, it'd be dot 16 through 23, 24 through 31, and so on and so forth that we would be allocating to each school that's connected to that cloud. And by the way, when we talk to customers about the data center, we don't say data center anymore because nobody does. It's the cloud. We found that this would give us a scalable, summarizable, but not quite distinguishable subnetting scheme for each site. Now, kind of distinguishable because we have a certain range used for academic and nonprofit and so on and so forth, but it'd be really tough to say, okay, well, can I look at the IP address and say, that's the voice subnet for customer X? Uh, not really. And that's okay. Distinguishable is just a bonus. So now I come into the next set of questions and say, well, can we align our subnets with VLAN numbers? Another bonus. And another one I want to bring up because a lot of people almost make this a mandatory thing. They look and they go, man, I want VLAN 11 to be 10.11.11.0. And if it's not, I go crazy. It's really nice to have a VLAN number match the subnet. But do you know why it's nice? Because you can figure it out without having good documentation. Why do IT people like having the subnet match the VLAN? Because then they think, then I don't have to document. I can just look at it and figure it out. My friend, if you're going to do networking right, you have to document. There's no way around it. So having a table, which by the way, is going to be the next nugget I create, how to document your VLANs correctly, that shows the VLAN and the subnet it lines up to is a non-negotiable if you're talking about any scalable size network. This is just a bonus. And in our case, it does not match. Well, at least I don't think it will because we haven't actually applied that master subnet to our individual sites. But this one is an absolutely yes. It summarizes on two different levels. From an individual customer perspective and via itself, you can summarize the entire site by saying 10.48.0.0 forward slash 21. One advertisement, one routing entry in the data, data center table, one location. It's beautiful. I can also summarize the entire genre of customers. Let's say I start expanding to multiple data centers, one for academic, one for nonprofit, and so on. I could summarize the entire data center as it talks to the other data center as this gigantic subnet right here. So this is awesome summarization. And, and remember, the advantage of summarization is twofold. One, your routing table entries get smaller and simpler and easy to manage. But the second is you start hiding routing updates from sites that don't really need it. For example, if I had a couple schools that had major challenges with flapping routes, maybe their voice network was going up and down and up and down and up and down because students were playing with cables. Well, because I use a summarized route advertisement, I, I sum that whole site up into one advertisement, the data center doesn't even know about the individual subnet. Thus, it's not sending routing updates every single time it goes up and down and up and down and up and down. That's contained within the school. That's the real benefit of summarization. So now I want to take that individual master subnet for the site 
VIA specifically, and apply it to the individual VLANs. Here's what we're deciding on. VLAN 10, which was the server and static subnet, is going to use a slash 24, we already determined that size, and it'll get the first subnet from the group, 10.48.0.0 forward slash 24. So we've broken that slash 21 into yet another level, applying it to the VLAN directly. 254 addresses that we can use for our servers, printers, and other static devices. VLAN 20, which is our voice subnet, will be 10.48.2.0 forward slash 24. That'll handle our IP phones for the location. Now you might say, why did you skip one? Well, I skipped one just in case we grow. Remember, I left extra VLAN numbers like 11 and 21 available between these. So if we ever grew outside of this slash 24, I could add a 10.48.1 assigned to the servers, or in reality, whatever subnet I wanna assign there, or I should say whatever purpose I wanna assign there, could be that next slash 24. Perhaps, let me give you some situations. Maybe I've got that server VLAN and remember the three reasons for breaking into another VLAN? Security, scalability, or treatment. Maybe I've got some servers that I need to add that need a new level of quality of service. It might be easier to break them into their own VLAN. Or maybe I have a server that has a different level of security. It might be easier to break into another VLAN, thus giving myself a one VLAN growth for our little small business here. Now look at this one. This one might throw you for a second. VLAN 30, I said, is going to be a slash 22, and that'll be 172.16.0.0 forward slash 22. That doesn't follow our subnetting scheme at all. You know why? Remember what VLAN 30 was? The guest network. It's the BYOD guys. I don't want BYOD reaching the data center. I don't want them to be seen. I just want them to get to the internet, which each of these locations have a separate internet connection coming in. So we have redundant connectivity. We've got a low-grade business internet connection coming into the site, and it's used for all the BYOD, and matter of fact, it's used for all of these things unless it goes down. Then, and only then, all of the managed devices can come through the data center and get to the internet that way. I don't really want BYODs using data center bandwidth if the internet goes offline. They're BYODs, disposable devices. But I want you to get the big picture. As I roll out this scheme, the same strategy for all the other customers, this subnet gets reused. We've got a 172.16.0.0 forward slash 22 at every location. Since it's never seen at the data center, it just goes out through NAT to the local internet connection. It works well that way. A thousand devices, a thousand IP addresses just for BYOD. And I could jump straight to that flex VLAN, VLAN 50, if you remember that one, that's just a flexible use. I use 172.16.50 forward slash 24 as that subnet, which again, if I wanted to grow to Flux VLAN 51, 52, again, VLANs that don't access the data center, they just go straight out to the local internet connection through NAT, I can do that all day long. The last one, VLAN 40, is our slash 22 that we're using for our internal or managed devices. This is a real subnet, and notice it's 10.48.4. If you use a slash 22 subnet mask, you get an increment of four, and that uses up the rest of the range, four through seven, 255. A thousand addresses that I can use just for my managed devices. Now some of you might be thinking, let me clear off all my scribbles here, could you have used slash 23 for those subnets? Yes, I could have. And that would have given me 512 addresses, 510 usable addresses for VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, and let me grow those much larger. But when I designed this scheme, I thought to myself, what's more probable? that I'm gonna end up with 500 some phones at this location with our 30 employees, or that I'm gonna end up with a different segment of VLAN that maybe needs some different treatment or security setting. For me, and for our businesses that we manage, there's more likely a chance that we're gonna end up with another VLAN being created. Thus, I gave myself that one VLAN flexibility. Okay, you say, well, what about when you outgrow that or you have a need for even more? Well. At that point, I would just allocate another master subnet. I would say, okay, well, VIA, let's, you know, maybe there's some businesses that get added in the middle, maybe not, but VIA would then also get 10.48.8 through 15.0 forward slash 21 allocated, and we can just keep growing each one of these VLANs to accommodate all of these new addresses that we've assigned. Two big blocks of addresses assigned to that, or three, or four, it doesn't really matter. We can scale this because we've got these bite-sized chunks that we go after. Oh my goodness. I can't tell you how much pain you will solve yourself if you just take the time. It takes a few hours to come up with something like this. 
If I could show you, if I <laughs> grab my webcam and turn around, you'd see my wall size whiteboards where I've got scratch and drawing, all this kind of stuff, where I come up with things like this. It takes thought. It takes planning. It takes bouncing it off somebody else and saying, what do you think? Shoot some holes in this, which I did as well. But for goodness sake, please don't just go start creating VLANs and then go, oh yeah, they need a subnet. How about, foom, and you just start throwing subnets around. It will work. That's the problem. And you'll get a couple years down the road and wish you would have planned. We now have a subnetting scheme that we can use for VIA and for all the other clients that we service as well that fit into that small to mid-size category. We've now aligned our global subnet strategy to individual site VLANs. <laughs>